We shall start the recording. Oh yeah, it started. All right, last week, one more test, which will be on Monday. Monday. And your engines have to be put together by Monday. Monday. So we're going to talk about oil. Talk about oil. You can write that down, oil. <clears throat> or for some of you, it's the 710. That's oil upside down. You have a cap says oil, but it's the other one. So anyway, don't worry about it. All right, oil. Well, functions of oil. Oil has a lot of things that it must do for our aircraft engines. Functions of oil. Man, I got a lot of things. A, B, C, D, E, <coughs> F, G, G, H. Told you there was a lot. All right, help me out here. See how many you can get. Lubrication, Lubrication was number one answer. Cooling. I'm not done writing lubrication. <laughs> lubrication, anti-wear. Unless you're into wear. Uh, who said cooling? Cooling. This really isn't in an order, but if I don't write it in the right spot, I'll figure. I won't know which one's missing. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This is. I'm looking through the list. It must. There's some things in here that like oil, good oil should also be. So um, what else we got? There we go, cleaning. Get rid of contaminants, cleaning. Coating, what kind, well, why would I want to coat it? Corrosion protection. How come you're getting them in actual order, except for this one, which is really kind of an odd one? What else we got? Sealing. Sealing. Where does it seal? Cylinder wall. Oh, very good. Seals, like as in ring to cylinders. Ring to cylinder walls. Excellent. You guys don't need me. Mm -hmm. okay. What else we got? Anything? Give up. Uh, like I said, this one's kind of weird. Oil must is really more of an oil must maintain proper M A T A I maintain not mountain maintain uh, proper viscosity, which really isn't a function of oil. It just has to. Uh, let me see F. Ooh, this is a good one here. We'll go thermal stability. It's got to be thermal. Which goes along with proper viscosity. But this one, maybe you didn't get it because of your engine. Provide hydraulic action. Do we have any hydraulically actuated things in an aircraft engine? Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Propeller, constant speeds. And you don't know it yet, but turbochargers, controllers, race gates. So, all right, let's see. Um, that is redundant. I wrote lubricant, a natural or artificial substance having a greasy or oily properties, which can be used to do those things. So, that is a function of a lubricant. Uh, we have many different types of oils. Different types of oils. Let's see here. All right, we are, there we go. All right, we have animal oil made from animals. I'm not going to, this is stuff I'm not going to write if you want to. Something called tallow oil, T A L L O W, oil, tallow oil, made from. According to this, cow fat. I don't know how accurate this is. We've got lard oil made from? Lard is made out of? Uh, pigs. Uh, neat's foot oil. Neat's foot. N E A T S foot oil. Neat's foot oil. <laughs> Tree or 
According to this, the shin, bone, and feet, but not hooves. I wrote that word for word. They don't have feet, they have hooves. So how is it shin, bone, and feet, but not hooves? Where's the feet and the hood? I, okay. Um, <laughs> sperm oil. Sperm oil. There you go. Sperm oil. Do you know why it's called sperm oil? Oh, I wonder why. Like that. It's from the <laughs> lard of the sperm oil. It looks like Mark 19. Um, yeah, that was like a big time oil um, used for uh, like machinery and stuff like that. Oh. Mark 19s, that's what they use exclusively. Mark 19? Automatic grenade I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those for the record. <laughs> <coughs> All right, easy one. Porpoise oil. Dolphins. Porpoises, different than a dolphin. And... Uh, Baby oil, which is made from? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know which part of the baby you get the oil from, but. <laughs> you just squeeze it. Actually, I wrote him a baby oils, mineral oil. Um, problem with a lot of these oils, though, is you cannot be used for internal combustion engines because they produce fatty acids at high temperatures. And you don't want fatty acids going around your engines. They clog up the arteries and you get a heart attack. It, uh, it'll ruin the oil pump. Um, and they have a lower co co -e coefficient of friction, which means they're not as slippery. Um, we also have, oh, uh, that slide didn't do it. Vegetable oil, yeah, which was made from Vegetables, plants. So we have castor oil, olive oil, rapeseed oil, which is a funny thing. That's made from Grapes. rape seeds. It's rapeseed oil, like R A P E S E E D. And cottonseed oil, made from cottons. Um, let's see, castor oil, made from castor beans. Olive oil, made from olives. olives. Where do you get? Never mind virgin olive oil. Right. <laughs> what? You said olive oil, so all of the other reindeer. Oh, <laughs> nice. So where do you get uh, virgin olive oil from? But I'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> Tell you a break. All right. Um, problem with vegetable oil is it oxidizes when exposed to air and causes gummy conditions in the engine. So you don't want gummy bears floating around in there. Um, causes steel then to wear rapidly, so you're losing your lubrication properties. And again, a lower coefficient than mineral. <coughs> so, we have a lot of oils, they don't work. I don't know, have you seen that, uh, I don't know, it's, it was some sort of um, social media thing where it was like a challenge or something. You're supposed to like look like you're pouring vegetable oil in your engine and send a picture to your significant other. Like, I don't need your help putting oil in. Somebody did that in this class. Their girlfriend did it to the, he just panicked. He's like, I got to go, I got to go. What's wrong? Look at, she's putting mineral oil. She's putting just mineral oil, you know, the cooking oil or whatever. Yeah. Like, ah. All right, that brings us to mineral oil. So we have the animal oil, vegetable oil. So let's see, we have animal. Animal, vegetable, and mineral oil. Uh, let's see. So this is our primarily used in combustion engines. Uh, it can be classified as a solid, semi-solid, and fluid. Obviously, the fluid's your regular oil. Solid would uh, mica, soapstone, and graphite. But those things don't dissipate heat real well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff in here I don't need. Um, sorry, talking about the solids. Let's tell you about it. 
I have to write it. Where was I? Solids. Mica. I don't know what that is. Soapstone. I use that when I'm welding to write on stuff. I have same stuff. I don't know. Graphite. So graphite we use in light lubrication. Works great in locks, stuff like that. Uh, does not dissipate heat very well. And we want to dissipate heat, so stay away from that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Mainly used in light lubrication, especially when freezing could be a problem. Firearms. Locks. Semi-solids, extremely heavy oils and greases. I really hate the smell of gear oil. You guys are, it stinks. Uh, according to this, I don't know how true this is. I think it's something else. But grease is a mixture of oil and soap. I don't know what kind of soap. Uh, keep that in mind if you need a bath and you're out of soap. <clears throat> Good tube of grease will do you. <clears throat> um, oil and sodium soap. A different kind of soap. Uh, oil and calcium soap. Okay, it's a different kind of soap. Um, and then we have the fluids, of course, which would be oils, which is used primarily as the lubricant in combustion engines, which I already wrote. Why? It's, uh, I want to write this, easily pumped, obvious, easily sprayed, obvious, uh, absorbs and dissipates heat quickly, maybe not obvious, but now you know. Um, good for cushioning. What do you mean by cushioning? Like sharp impacts? Like what? Like impacting? Yeah. Forces? Yeah. Yeah. It protects against impacts. So, um. The cans of the tappets? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Can of the tappets. It provides a, a barrier is the word I wanted. In fact, while I'm thinking about it, my father-in-law, he's a really cool dude. I really like him. Um. He seems to love oil. I mean, he really gets into it when I talk about oil with him. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got into it. And he's like, you know, like my dad told me, you know, the weight of oil. We'll talk a lot about weight of oil. But you got to think of it like ball bearings. You know, like the heavier the weight, the bigger the ball bearing. And the smaller, the little smaller. So there's all little ball bearings in there. Which makes you think that another movie with Chevy Chase. It's all ball bearings these days. You guys seen that? Watch. Oh, all right. We're a very old movie. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Um, let's see. Good cushioning effect. Chemically stable at moderately high temperatures. Moderately high. How high do we get before it starts to break down? 575. Uh, 575, and it turns to? Oh, Coke. Coke, not Pepsi, Coke. Uh, and it does perform well at <laughs> lower temperatures, but not extremes. So we got to take care of that. Um, mineral, and then I've got synthetic. Oh, which is funny because in your car, probably most of you are running synthetic these days. Not so much in aircraft. We're not doing that. Tried it, failed. Um, not made from crude oil. Widely used in turbine engines. So it works fine in turbine engines. Um, does not evaporate or break down. Um, doesn't produce coke or other deposits. So it's, it's really good stuff. Um, let me see. Synthetic. I could write that. Let me see. So where's the failure in synthetic? Yeah. Synthetic. Uh, so much of our problems stem from our fuel with lead. I was going to say that. I, yeah, whenever you have something that works in cars that does an airplane, you go right to the lead. So there's your problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, I, I think this lecture is going to look a whole lot different by uh, in a year from now, if not, yeah, two, maybe one year. Um, I saw something today. They were trying to outlaw uh, the unleaded, or sorry, the leaded fuel by 2030. Uh, not made from crude oil. Let me see. Let me see. Does not produce coke. That's what I put. Does not produce coke. So, big advantage. Does not see coke is a solid residue remaining when oils undergo severe oxidation and thermal breakdown at extreme engine temperatures. The higher the temperature, the harder, blacker, and more brittle the re residual residue. Is the word I wanted. Uh, all coking events occur because the temperature of the oil residue time are well, the residue time are uh, both higher than the stability limitations of the oil. Coke formation events. Increase dramatically as local metal contact temperatures exceed 500 
and I put 72, 300 degrees Celsius. So it's 300 C or 572 F, which is to say that oil doesn't just coke. I mean, anytime it comes in contact with that, what that's saying is it doesn't just, oh, we got coke, 500, because your exhaust valves are well over that. And they don't, you do get coke there, but the problem is when the oil sits there, then it starts coking. Uh, same with turbocharger bearings. Turbocharger bearings are running much harder than, hotter than that. And so, um, but you don't get the coke in there built up as long as you, uh, what's that? Keep, keep the oil flowing. All right. Boy, did I put a bunch of crap in here. Okay. Um, fully synthetic. Let me see. Synthetic. We'll put this. Tried. And aviation piston engines. Engines, but was a failure. Oops, but was a failure. Um, according to this, it caused excessive cylinder wear. So let me see. Semi synthetic. is widely used. So we do have semi-synthetic, just not full synthetic. Not even, let me see. Either have a slide or... There it is. Class action lawsuit demands that thousands of TCM 475 2550 series engines that use mobile AV1 synthetic oil be grounded for teardown, inspection, overhauled at mobile's expense. We urge owners not to panic. This is in 1995. Mike Bush. Yeah. <laughs> engine lubricating properties important aircraft engine lubricating properties there we go um, gravity Gravity. Uh, we talk about specific gravity. We talked about specific gravity and electricity. Remember that? A numerical value which serves as an index of the weight of a measured volume of the product is what we're talking about here, um, as opposed to specific gravity. So we have gravity and specific gravity. So what can I say about gravity is, um, I'll write it out since this is new. A numerical value value which serves as an index as an index of the weight of a measured volume of the project the weight of a measured volume of the product So, all right, so we got to have the right gravity. We got to also have, I'm on B, I don't know, um, specific gravity. The weight of a substance when compared to? Water. water. Uh, um, let's see. Water has a specific gravity of 1.000. And, um, and weighs weighs 8.328 pounds per gallon. Um, water, we'll make that water. And then oil, um, 
MC oil specific gravity, specific gravity of 0 0.9, up about 0 0.9, and weighs, this is something you want to commit to memory, 7 pounds per gallon. So the two weights that I commit to memory are 7 and 6. 7 pounds per gallon for oil, oil and 6 pounds per gallon for fuel. Very good. Fuel. All right, let's talk about point C. Important aircraft engine lubricating properties, what we're looking for in good oil. Uh, flashpoint. That's what I call the corner down there by the 7 by the man, p.m. Uh, flashpoint is what? Uh, close, or yes, not wrong. So that would be the temp, the temperature, the temp at which the oil or something, temp at which a substance, um, which we'll just say a liquid, even though it's probably anything, uh, must be heated up, must be heated to, heated to, to give off enough vapor <clears throat> to form a combustible mixture above the surface, above the surface, that will momentarily flash so momentarily is the key word, momentary flash or burn when exposed to a flame. Uh, flash point, and then we have fire point. Which is same as above. Um, same as above. But will continue to burn. But will burn continuously. when exposed to flame. All right, so we want our oil to not explode on us. <coughs> it's sort of a big deal. Um, flash point momentarily flashes. Fire point continues to burn. So we want aircraft lubricating oil must have I say all lubricating oil. <clears throat> High or low? High. High. D, let's talk about viscosity. All right, so all that stuff is kind of nice to know, but you're not engineering oil, so you're going to get what you get. I suppose if I bought an oil that had a very low flash point and it tended to uh, blow flames out of my breather, I probably wouldn't buy that particular brand anymore. Switch to something that had a much higher fire point and flash point, so I didn't blow up my engine. But as far as viscosity goes, you're going to have many choices across the board. And if you're working in general aviation 
it's going to be one of your number one questions around engines is what kind of oil should I use? And so it's good to be ready with this answer and understand it so that you don't go, on, well, I don't know. What does the book say? I belong to a bunch of groups. You guys have like groups for your airplanes and stuff on Facebook and stuff. And anybody asks a good question, there's always like eight guys who go, what does the book say? Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for chiming in. I, I very much appreciate your, all right. I've been doing it for 20 years. I haven't had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another favorite. All right, viscosity, the resistance the oil has to flowing. High viscosity. Pours very slow. And low viscosity. Pours uh, faster. Not very fast, but faster. Why do you figure out the viscosity? I'm glad you asked. Thank you. It's tested with a Sabolt. 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 There's a thing we test fabric with. It's Sabolt, I think. It's a little bit different spelling. Uh, with a S A Y B O L T. Universal. So you use it. At not just on Earth, uh, visc viscosometer. And let me see. I'll do this. It is how long it takes. How long it takes. 60 uh, cc's, cubic centimeters, to flow. To flow at a given temp and they're going to use a chart and they're going to do it at 100 degrees 130 degrees and 210 degrees f so why they do 60 cc's on a fahrenheit I, who knows uh through an orifice and then these readings are given a number and then these readings given a number. <coughs> All right, this is where it gets kind of like, why would they do this? So we have different grades, just like an automotive, you have different grades. So we have aviation grade oil and we have your automotive which would be SAE so an SAE which is pretty much your lowest your, your, your highest viscosity that's really thick no no multivis the thinnest oil you can get five but you can't just get five right it's five W something that's a multivis Okay, 30. I'll take 30. That is our aviation, 65. Don't think I've ever seen that. Don't think, I don't, my memory doesn't. All right, next we'd have SAE, 40, which is our aviation, 80. We have SAE, 50, which is our aviation, 100. There is a pattern, except for this one. This one doesn't follow, but it's just double. 40 is 80, 50 is 100, uh, 60 is 120, and 70 would be 140. So that's how we do our weights in aviation, and that's the whole list right there. My entire life is pretty much just spent in these two right here. Uh, this one right here will be for like radial. 
they'll use thicker oil. But otherwise, our opposed engines are pretty much in the 80 to 100 range. What oil do you guys use? 1550 or so. Same? Same? Okay. So what, you think you're better than me now? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> Cam's on top. All right. So the you said the highest viscosity is a 30? Lowest. Lowest viscosity? Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm not a car. I'm not teaching a car class. Let me see. Readings are given a number. Five. I don't know why this comes next. Does this make sense? It's like a missing a page or something. So we got to select oil. And I have some random notes here. So I'll write these notes. Typically, colder the environment, uh, the lower the viscosity should be. I'll put selected so that you don't think that I'm talking about oil just sitting there on the shelf and it gets colder, it gets, you know, more liquid. It's the opposite, obviously. Typically, the colder environment, lower viscosity, um, the higher the temp. The higher the viscosity selected. So, all right, we talk about opposed engines. We'll talk about multi uh, viscosity in a little bit, but uh, we have a lot of oils that we use in aviation that are not multi viscosity. In fact, it's kind of a newish thing, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so, we have our straight 80 and our straight 100. So, around here, it wouldn't be, depending on the size of the engine, smaller engines seem to be a little more susceptible, <laughs> and smaller engines tend to go more towards the 80, like a little C85 or you know, 0200, I'd go more towards that. Um, but in our summertime, we'd want to run 100 weight. In the wintertime, we'd go towards 80. Now, because we have reasonably mild winters, and uh, can we say reasonably mild summers? I don't know, 110 degrees around here sometimes. But uh, that'd, that'd be very different if we were in Alaska, which I've never worked at, or back east right now, where it was like negative four outside the other day with my son. I'm like, that's really cold. Uh, so yeah, let me see. Um, Does synthetic not have the same characteristics? Because like turbines, you get 2380, which is the most common. And I think that one probably will get to... I don't know. That's Phil's class. Um, only worked on a few turbines, and then we just put in the oil they gave us. Citations. So, all right. Um, let me see. This is worth noting because I think I asked a question on this or something, and I know there's some. So, some. Gosh, I wrote some older aircraft, but I I think our 310 actually has a system, this system on it. So, um, let's put some aircraft. Some aircraft are uh, equipped with equipped with oil dilution systems. Systems to help with cold weather. Help with cold weather. We'll put starts. So our engines, it's, they're expensive. They're just different. I don't know, a car, I've never lived in a very, very cold environment. Nobody really preheats their cars in cold environments. I mean, no diesels have uh, block heaters and stuff, right? But it's really common 
to uh, to preheat your engine in colder environments. They actually bring a they call them a dragon or something. It you know it blows hot air and because my aircraft came from Wisconsin. I mean I saw it yesterday. It's in a cabinet. I'm like I opened up you know twice a year. I'm like oh yeah I forgot about that. I've got a blanket that goes around the whole cowling with little snaps on it and stuff. And you know I've got these. Uh, where the air inlet is, I've got these these buttons that go in there that break it down to like that, so it only gets a little bit of air going through the engine. It's crazy, you know, because cold air, cold winter operation. Um, but uh, yeah, so a lot of people will definitely preheat their engines. I don't remember offhand. I guess I should look it up and have that. It just doesn't get that cold here. It doesn't get cold enough here to even think about that. But um, there's a certain temperature, and I want to say it's below 40ish. You want to preheat somewhere around that. It's not terribly cold. It's it's, but it just doesn't get that way here. You know, if you're going to go flying around here, by the time you get to the hangar, open the door up, it's already 55, 60 degrees, even in the in you know. But if it's raining, you don't go flying anyway. So I don't. Know. I don't. All right. So um, oh yeah. So some aircraft are with an oil dilution system to help with cold weather starts. What it is, and I think a lot of radial engines have this, is that you actually have a button that you can push and it sends your fuel to the oil tank. So you're actually adding gasoline, aviation gasoline, to the oil. So it dilutes it down, makes it real thin with the fuel in there. And then the idea is, well, it does work, when you start up the aircraft and as it warms up, the fuel, which is very volatile, is gonna gas off, go out the breather, also, if you put a little igniter there, you can get like a little afterburner going on it. Uh, so that the, the, it burns off, then you're left with just oil. So before you shut down, I guess the procedure would be idle, dilute it, which is weird. Like I said, I don't know. There must be a chart somewhere that says how cold it is and how long you push the button. Because you don't want to push the button until you see gasoline running out of the oil breather or something. It's like, well, I guess that's enough. It's full. No, all right. Uh, let's see. Some of the old solution counter thing. Let's see, um, the oh, the system pumps system pumps um, gasoline. That's funny. Gas into the oil tank into the oil tank um, to make it thinner to make oil thinner, effectively lowering its viscosity. Um, fuel evaporates at operating temp. Um, if oh, it stays. I'm sure. I bet it stays in the oil. Lead doesn't tend to evaporate, I don't think. It's a good lubricant. So it adds lubricity. <laughs> See, if the dilution dilution valve sticks, what would happen? You got this this solenoid that's closed, and you hit a button, it opens, and then fuel pressure, because you got fuel pumps running anyway, so you just tee it off of the the main pipe's going towards the carburetor, but you have a little branch with a solenoid that takes that pressure and it'll dump it into the engine. But that little solenoid starts to leak. So you're flying along, and you don't have the system on, but it's leaking gasoline constantly into your oil. What would the symptoms be? Challenger go with throttle up. Challenger? What's go with that? Throttle up. Huh? Go with throttle up. Go throttle up. Okay. Throttle up. Um, could, that's for sure. What would be your first symptoms before the explosion? Low oil pressure. What's that? You're going to get low oil pressure. Why low oil pressure? Because you're pumping gasoline. Think about going to the extreme. If you put gasoline in your oil system instead of oil, you would get very low oil pressure because those gears weren't designed to pump gasoline. So low oil pressure. When you get low oil pressure, you tend to get... High oil temps. Why do you get high oil temp? 
because it's not because the oil is no longer doing its job and if it's not doing its job parts are rubbing against each other when parts rub they get warm and then whatever is going across them is going to also heat up and come back and give you an indication that you have an overheat condition or oil temps going to start climbing because the parts in the engine are getting hot so not a good thing let's see Um, I do have a thing called viscosity index, which is a little different than what you think. Um, that's a measure. I don't think they tell us this. N -E -A -S -E -U -R, measure of... Um, I want to try to make this like, abbreviated. Oil's ability to maintain N-E-I-N-T-A-I-N uh, the same viscosity at different temps. There we go. So if I said I had 100 weight oil and it's 100 weight when it's really cold and it's 100 weight when it's really hot, that's got a really good viscosity index. It just stays the same. It's very stable. So the higher the index, the less it changes. Uh, I wrote color. Color's a concern. When I was in the Navy, uh, I wasn't an aviation mechanic at the time. I was more of a shipboard mechanic. And that's something we had to do every single morning. If you had the morning, this one watch I stood, sound security. You had to go around and you had to get it with glass jars, little square jars, about like that big. It was, I guess it was kind of fun. But you had to go to all the different machinery and you had to get a sample of that oil and you had to take it to the... Uh, main engine room and put it in this little container with glass, you know, lights on, like you're looking at x-rays, and so you had to check all the color of all the oil and all the machinery. So, uh, although I guess I, you know, since I brought that up, let's take it into something that's relevant to us. What can we really tell by looking at the color of the oil in our aircraft engine? Uh, to a point, you can tell if it's contaminated. Um, but let's say that, you know, you know what, what fresh oil looks like, mostly. And I was thinking when I was, a, when I was a kid, they tried this thing where it was like recycled oil with graphite. It was just black. It looked like it was used, I think it was used oil in the can as well. <laughs> Ran it to a coffee filter. Hey, there you go. Um, sure, it's got graphite. Um, but, okay, so we take oil that's, you know, this, uh, I don't know what to call it, honey-colored. And we pour it into the engine and we look at, you know, pull the dipstick out and you can barely see it, you know. And then we run it 10, 15, 20 hours, you know, and you pull it out and it's, eh, it's not very, you know, it's still a little, a little darker, but not bad. Can we, can we judge anything by what we're looking at, really? And the answer would be no. No, all the experts say that, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, Unless it turns white, then you really know something wrong. What would be white? Water in it? Yeah, well, we don't have that much of a problem in our air-cooled engines. But, yeah, if it turns white and foamy, yeah, you got a big problem. But I would argue to say that if there are no problems, looking at the color of the oil to determine when to change it is bad. If there is a problem, then looking at the color of the oil is a big deal. You know, if you've only got a couple hours on it, it's coming out black. I'm like, something's not right. White, something's not right. If the color changes dramatically, something's wrong. Then it shouldn't be. If it sparkles, like, like somebody's got glitter in it, you do not put the dipstick on and say, hey, I like my glitter oil. Next time, I'm going to order this stuff next time. It's very fancy. <laughs> yeah. No, no. So I say, yeah, always, uh, you know, when you pull the dipstick, take a, you know, take a look at it, especially for the sparkles. <laughs> That's really bad. But don't look at the color to determine how long you should go. Unless it's bad. Um, cloud point. I have cloud point in here. I don't think we're going to see. Cloud point. 
Um, cloud point is really a low temperature thing. It happens at low temp when the wax uh, starts, let me see, separation of the wax, yeah. Wax starts to solidify, starts to solidify. Did you say wax? Wax, W-A-X. I know, I'm having a little slurring speech tonight. One of my liners is jacked up. It's driving me nuts. Hmm. I think I wore through it. Uh, let's see. Uh, temperature at which the separation of wax and the oil becomes visible, usually right above the solidification point. Uh, cloud point. We have, these are all the things I think. The pour point. That's where I'm at after spending a bunch of money. Christmas, I'm at the pour point. Pour point, uh, temperature at which oil flows without a disturbance. So, um, temp at which oil flows without disturbance. I don't know, I think that disturbance is the wax in it. Or icy chunks. Obviously, we need something that has good chemical stability. Uh, resist oxidation, which is also another word for coking, breaking down, or coking, which I said twice. So resists oxidation, coking, or breaking down. I was wondering if you were going to ask me that. I was like, I don't know what the hell. All the, all the uh, commercials always talk about oil breaking down. Starts to, I think about it like, okay, if you take my father-in-law's analogy of the ball bearings, they're like ruined, kind of crushed. The chem, it, it's, we use in aviation, we don't use semi-synthetics, which, what well, we do now, sorry. Um, yeah, we don't use full synthetic, but... We use mineral oil, which I don't think it breaks down. I don't know. But if you start putting additives in, the chemicals in it, they start not working. Okay. There's a measurement which they refer to as a shear, molecule shear. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember reading that now. <laughs> I guess it's, it's in Schwander's book. Uh, I guess it's changing the molecule. Yeah. Actually break down. Yes. Sorry you asked. <laughs> no, I am. No, um, <laughs> no, no he's, he's absolutely right. I, remember, I have a book that talked all about that. And it was very dry reading, but yeah, it was about the molecule chain. It goes on the molecule chain, and they start breaking down and, and uh, failing. And so, yeah. I don't know if that's a, a, a huge problem in oil or what causes it. All right, so we already talked about the need for lubrication which was uh, reduced friction, obviously, because friction would create heat. Do I need to go over this? <laughs> what, do, what do we get from friction? What does it friction cause? Heat? Wear. Loss. Loss of power. power. There we go. Uh, what are some of the frictions we have to deal with in the engine? Rings, Rings which would be? Cylinders. No, it's sliding friction. Outside. What else we got? Bearings, Bearings which would be? Rotational, Rotational or rolling. Um, Gears. Gears would be? Rotational. I would call it sliding, but I know one called it wiping. So, I don't know the difference in wiping and sliding. Eh, sliding would be this. Wiping just kind of does that differently. Would wiping be tappets, though? Yep, tappets. Very good. Someone could say sliding. but uh, Let's see. Characteristics of aircraft oil. Well, we had the proper viscosity. It has to be easily distributed, the engine parts. Uh, high anti-friction characteristics. Provide a strong film between moving parts. Because really, oil... 
keeps parts from touching. That's why you can run in a crankshaft in bearings for 2,000 hours and pull it out and not have a whole lot of wear because it really doesn't touch it. That's why you can have a camshaft riding inside of an aluminum case for the entire life of the engine multiple times over. It's like take the engine down, you know, run to overhaul, check it, still good. Run to overhaul, check it, still good. Run to overhaul, check it. Cam doesn't wear because the cam isn't really riding inside of that. It's riding in oil. It's pressure oil. So, all right. Um, so we need maximum fluidity at low temperatures. We can't have solid oil. Um, anti good anti-wear properties. Maximum cooling ability. Maximum resistance to oxidation and non-corrosive. Break time. Break.